So Victoria, uh, it's really nice to catch up with you. Um, tell me, what has the last two two weeks been like for you? Oh, it was terrible because everything started 24th of February when I waking up at I think around 6 a.m. because my phone like calling, calling, calling every time and I cannot understand what happened and open it and start to read terrible news like uh, Russian attack Ukrainian, it's a lot of bombs and yeah and at that moment everything was changing like all, all what we planned like it was not important in that time because all our thoughts was uh, with our family with our country with ukraine and and still now now it's like a little bit better because at the first it was a panic shock now we're a little bit like calm but it's still we are really nervous because every day it's more and more and more and yeah it's terrible now you were not in Ukraine when this happened, were you? You were outside of Ukraine. Yeah, I was in Krakow at the Kolna training center for the training camp, and it's almost done at that time. It was it was twenty four of February, and I have a flight ticket back home twenty five of February. Yeah. And uh, at that day, I, I checked my flights and it was cancelled. And we went to the boss of this club to ask what we can do because we don't have uh, much money for staying here. We have only for the our training camps and and, and all our uh, credit cards were um, blocked. And we start to ask what we can do and. We are really grateful because they say you can stay how long you want. Yeah. And they provide for us food, even training. Because before I told you, we need only one room. We can cook in for ourselves at the kitchen, no problem. Only, only room, only one room for girls and for the boys. But they, they say, no, you should go to, to training. You will training for free, no problem. You should sometimes clean your mind and don't sit every time on the phone yeah and now we're still here and big thanks for them now victoria what many people may not realize is that when you woke up this morning and did the morning and you saw these messages your young daughter and your mother and family were back in ukraine what were you thinking when you saw these messages and knew that they were were back in ukraine yeah, like I told before, it was a panic and I uh, came to my coach and say, you, you should bring me to the border. I don't care how you should bring me to the border. I will pass the border. I will go home. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I, I don't hear you. I'm just saying, you, you take your time. We understand completely. It's a very emotional time. Yeah. And I told him, like, I don't care how, but I should come to Ukraine. But when my husband, my mom called to me and start to say, like, everything for the moment in our city, everything fine. Like, we need to take time to thinking about how we will do without panic and yeah i'm staying i think yeah i had a birthday 27 of february and my mom called me and say okay we will go to the to lviv it's uh, the closest city to the poland ukrainian uh, my husband will drive them, my mom and uh, my daughter, and I need to go to the Lviv to pick up them. Because, you know, now at the railway station everywhere in Ukraine, it's like a lot of people, every, everybody fighting for them place on train to the Europe. And it can be dangerous and hard for her. And 27 of February, I took the tram to the border, past the border. I sleep all night in Lviv at the railway station. 
Oh, it's it was uh, very I don't know how to say like old people let on the floor in the in the railway station. Yeah, a lot of kids like all of them crying. They don't understand what happened. Yeah, it's it's a terrible picture. Yeah, and uh, next day at the eight a.m. we took this tram. It was yeah also really hard because it's a lot of people want to catch it. Yeah, and uh, I think twelve hours. It's it's just uh, two hundred kilometers, but we we go twelve hours. Yeah, in in one um, in the tram, uh, like in one place where should sit only two people is sitting like eight people because yeah every everybody understand like if if we can take more we should do it because yeah it saves our lives yeah and now they're here with me safe were you scared when you went back were you scared at all about what might happen no, I'm not scared. Like I know what I need to do, and I just go and yeah. For for the moment, like this place of our country, it's quite okay. Lviv also my city, but yesterday I watched the news. Like in my city, comes eight bombs, eight bombs to the airport. Yeah, now we don't have airport anymore. Yeah, and I am afraid because they can um, they can start more, you know, to the city because they bump pri private houses. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. And, and your husband is still there in Ukraine, I, I assume, and you have other family who are still there. Yeah, my father's still there. Uh, my husband's uh, like men don't allow to pass the border. Yeah, and they still stay there. And also, two days ago, I am back uh, to the border, Ukrainian, because my husband want to bring me a car. And I ask him, mother, maybe she want to come with me and sh she can be safe here. But she say no, when my son and my husband in Ukraine, I will not go to to Poland, yeah. The, the same for my mother, she don't really want go and let uh, my father, but she understands she, she, she need to go with Valeria. Someone need to go with Valeria. And yeah, that's why she coming. But you know, women don't really want to uh, let husbands, let the houses, yeah. And you know, at, at this for, for the younger people, it's much more easier because they are communicated than other country. But people who I think under fifty, it's more hard to let them play. And I I also understand them. Like uh, when I called to my mother, I told her, I I want to have you here in Krakow with me. I I, I because. I will not nervous how you there, but if you decided to come back to Ukraine, it's it will it will be your choice. And she said, I will go with you, I will help you. And yeah, she is here with me. Do you worry about what might happen to your husband and your father, or do you think that they will be safe? Of course, of course, I'm worried. Yes, two days ago when I came to the border, I seen him. Like um, him, him feeling was like uh, I, I saw in him eyes. Um, uh, he wants to start crying, but I I stay like no, don't 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 do it. Everything will be good in few days. We can meet again. Everything finished. Don't panic. But when I cross the border and uh, go to Ukraine all the way I was crying like I was keeping 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 but after it's like and I was all the road I'm crying here yeah. and Victoria what do you think will happen to Ukraine I mean the world is amazed about how strong your country is and how hard everyone is fighting but what do you think will happen 
I of course believe that we are uh, we will win this war for sure. Like I'm really believe to our uh, army, but what I see like they destroy everything in our country. Like Kiev, Kharkiv, the main the main cities. Like now it's on fire, everything destroyed. Yeah, but and. But it doesn't matter. Matter that a child's also dying. Child's little child's like I read uh, a few hours ago. Like child's eight months because uh, family wants to save uh, this child and they're running away to the railway station and Russians army like stop them and kill them. Yeah, and it's terrible to read. But yeah, I don't know. And 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 also the problem. I'm I'm not really good with the political things, but what I read that NATO don't want to close the sky above the Ukraine. I don't know really why, and but maybe it's if they they make it, it can help because a lot of bombs flying to the to the uh, places where the uh, normal civil people live, not the army. I think NATO, NATO say they can't close the sky, they don't want to close the skies because it might start a world war. But for people in Ukraine, I suppose for people in Ukraine, you're already in a war, aren't you? And so this is for you, life and death. This is the future of your country. Yeah. You've talked about how generous people have been in Poland. What sort of support, Victoria? could we provide to you? Could everyone in the canoeing family and people who are watching you now and listening to what you've been through, what, what can they do to help? I think you just need to pray for our country. All of, all of the people need to pray for, for our country. For the moment, you know, the Polish Canoe Federation, the Polish uh, people, it's amazing. I, I cannot imagine can be like that because also here in the in this Kolnat center they have a, a sport hall where is the basketball volleyball players and they make it um, they took the matras uh, sleeping bags to this place and they invite all the people from ukraine who need the place where they can sleep and every day, a lot of volunteers, a lot of people uh, coming to this center with the things, with the clothes, with the things for the, like washing, uh, brush the tea, everything, what, what they need. And it's like a lot, a lot. And it's only for this center. I can imagine on all the Poland country, they really support us. And for the moment, we are safe here. Have, have, like Polish Confederation support us, and uh, we have food. We have where we can sleep. We allow to train. Yeah. Now we need only only peace in our country and stop it. It must feel so strange. And we believe it. Yeah, it, it must feel so strange for you, Victoria, trying to train and have life as normal when you know what is yeah. back in your country yeah it's really hard to concentrate on the water for example because your throats with the i don't know with your family and after after training you you, you see every time what the time what the time okay i go out and first when you come back you took your phone and read if everything good in your city with your parents, any news, yeah. And sometimes it's really hard to keep and going for training, you know. But because, for example, I don't know, I don't know, we, we will allow to, to take part of the competition this year or not because it's also about money. I don't know if our federation can uh, produce it for us, like... I, I don't know, like, I just train because, because, because I'm here for training and also a bit clean my mind and 
I don't know what what we will do in the future with the with the competition with everything. I think I can say, knowing the international canoeing community, that they will make sure that you're there, that you're paddling at events this year because everybody wants to make a stand and support Ukraine and. If you want to compete, Victoria, at the events this year, I'm sure that the international canoe community will make sure that you are there. Thank you very much. Yeah, I saw like a lot of messages around the world, like canoe slalom, it's like big, big family. A lot of athletes like from Australia to USA, Brazil, like right to you, sent a lot of love, uh, support, all of the Europe, um, countries like France invite in at, the, at them place to live, stay with them. Yeah, but for the moment, Krakow is the best solution because it's the closest place to Ukraine. And if someone, for example, now I have a, have a car and I can go fast to Ukraine to pick up, for example, someone, someone who wants to come. Yeah, and it's easier, it's, it, I don't know, even, even if it's finished tomorrow morning, I can go straight to Ukraine and hug my parents, hug my husband, yeah. Now is the best place to stay. How old is your daughter? Five, five years old. This, so, this summer will be six. So what, what do you tell her, Victoria? What do you tell her is happening at the moment? She don't really understand because in our city it was only a signal about uh, something wrong, you know, and they need to go to garage and yeah, uh, only about this she's asking, but uh, her grandma's mothers to explain her what happened. We need to take care. We, we need to go uh, deep, uh, deep in and yeah when she comes she, she was excited to see me actually like she don't ask anything she was really exciting and she's uh, she's happy because he he she hear also a lot of kids and she can plan with with them yeah and also we went to the swimming pool here she's really like to swim yeah i tried i try to to make some uh, activities for her. That's why she's not thinking a lot, where is my father? Because she, she really likes her father. Yeah, and she can start to ask where, why we're here and my, my father outside of the country. Yeah, but for the moment, she's okay. She don't ask anything about it. Because, because, I, spoke, because I spoke with them, with the women who came from Kharkiv, for example, where the kids watch, look at that, like bombs destroyed everything. Yeah, with these kids, like they're asking a lot, yeah, and sometimes crying there. Uh, if it's uh, something noise, they're afraid. Yeah, but with my daughter, it's everything good. Well, Victoria, you're very brave. Your family are very brave. Um, we're all thinking of you. We're all here to support you. Uh, we all want peace. That's what we all want. Um, we don't know how it's going to happen, but we want peace. As I mentioned, we are running an appeal to raise support, financial and other support for you. And we once again urge people to, to, to give generously as they already have. Um, Victoria, you, you stay safe and please pass our thoughts on to your family and we'll do whatever we can as an International Canoe Federation to support your family as well. Thank you so much. And um, I don't know what the coming days are going to be like for you. Uh, I hope you're sleeping sometimes, but it must be very hard to sleep and very hard to, to eat and do everything not knowing what's around the corner. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support also. We're feeling it, really. We're feeling support from around the world of the Kanuslalom family. And big thanks for them. Thanks. Thank you, Victoria. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye.